All right, guys. Oh my gosh, we got a 50 pound bag of onions the other day from a neighbor. And I'm gonna figure out a way to can them to some French onion soup and caramelized onions. And I've got my safety gear here. We're gonna see if these actually work to keep my eyes from burning. Here we go. Okay, let's get canning. It's not recording. Oh, is it? Fine. I didn't press record. It's just recording me. Tell me I don't have to edit. Okay. Alright, we're gonna start cutting these guys. So when you're cutting onions for French onion soup, you cut them in half. You get the skin off. I always just take the first layer. It's easier. And then you cut them into thick, like ribbons all the way across. So that they kind of look like these guys. So these will separate. They'll cook down and they'll be really good in your soup. All right, one bag down. I don't know how many more to go. I think this is two pounds, so let's keep going. These are working great. Okay guys, let's see if I can take these off for a second. Ooh, oh, getting marks. I've only done, oh, now my eyes are starting to burn actually. Shoot. Uh, three bags? Holy cow, okay, I've done three bags. This stuff where my pot is, so I could probably get two more bags into here. Um, I can move that. Okay, so a lot of onions smell. So we're gonna get two more bags hopefully to fill that up and cook them down. Alright guys, this is um, five bags, 15 pounds of onions here. I'm going to get it on the stove. Okay, I'm going to turn this on, uh, move it to low, and I actually don't have butter right now. Alex is making me some butter. So when he makes butter, I'll put a little bit in here and cover it. And then we're going to just let it cook low and slow to get it nice and caramelized. All right, Alex made a little bit of butter. This was uh, just about a quart of cream, maybe a little bit less. So here's our onions that we're cooking down. I'm gonna go ahead and add this butter and then um, just let them keep cooking down and we're gonna add more onions as we keep chopping them up. All right, so these guys have cooked down. You can tell just a couple inches there already. Um, and then we're gonna add this to here. It's gonna be a total of 24 pounds of onions cut up. I am just about at the halfway mark, so yay. 
Okay, so I decided I'm going to do onions three ways. I'm doing the French onion soup, which the onions are cooking down for that right now, the 24 pounds that I cut up. I'm also do some diced onions just in these jars here. And that way we can have diced onions on the shelf for whenever we want that. And then we'll also do some caramelized onions in these same size jars. Um, those will be good for burgers or steaks or whatever you want caramelized onions on. Alright, so I'm going to dice up some onions and fill up this bowl. This is my KitchenAid bowl. And then see how many jars we get from that. Alright, we have uh, six pounds of onions diced up, and we're just going to pressure can these into the half pint jars, and we're going to fill in the jars, and then that, I'm going to take two and you can press them in there, and you just want it to be headspace. Just typically like right there, this bottom one. We're not going to add any liquid to these because the onions have liquid and they'll release it as they pressure can. If you don't have a pressure canner, you can water bath them for three hours. I'm just checking on our caramelized onions. Scrape in the bottom, make sure they don't burn. Um, the butter is definitely melted in there now and they are starting to cook down. If you have a crock pot, you could do this overnight in your crock pot and it would probably be a lot easier. But just keep cooking them on low and stirring them every once in a while. Okay, so we have 12 pint, half pints, and three quarts. Uh, before you put your lids on, you always want to wipe your rims with vinegar if you have it. If you don't, you can just use water. Once it's clean, and you wipe it and you put your lid on. And then seal it. Just finger tight, also, don't uh, excessively tighten them. If you're ever canning dairy, do not use vinegar. Just use water. Because you'll end up with curdled whatever you're doing. Alright. 12 jars in the canner. I'm going to add cold water. Cold jars, cold water. If you are doing hot jars, you do hot water. Okay. your pressure canner, always lock opposite sides together. And again, do not over tighten, just finger tighten. to go through, so we're going to slice these ones up for caramelized onions. So if you can see, it's kind of hard to tell on video of course, but once you get steam coming out of this hole, and it's like actual steam, that like that, 
you're going to set your timer for 10 minutes. And after the 10 minutes is when you'll put your weight on. Okay, so it's been 10 minutes, and so this is your weight for the pressure canner. So it has a 5, 10, and 15 pounds. Um, always put the weight number down for your recipe. And if you're at higher altitudes, above 1,000 feet, usually you're going to want to do the 15 pounds. So we are at our altitude right now, we get to do the 10 pound weight. And so you stick it on there. And now what's going to happen is it's going to start to build the pressure over here. And when it gets to the 10 pounds of pressure, and this thing will be um, like shaking and rattling, that's when you start your timer for your pressure canning time. And so these were the half pint jars of onions, so we're doing those for 25 minutes. But we don't start that time until it gets up to pressure. Okay, we're at 10 pounds of pressure. Our little thing is rattling. So I'm gonna go ahead and set a timer for 25 minutes. Okay, the timer went off. I'm gonna turn the stove off. And you don't do anything, you let it sit. Okay, this pressure has to release naturally all the way down to zero. And then I just saw that the onions are overflowing. So let's get that taken care of really quick. All right, so even though the pressure is at zero, you wanna always do a little test with this guy and just kinda bring it and make sure that all the pressure is out. So remove your weight and let it finish releasing its pressure. And then you can open it and get them, get your jars out. Okay, so same process as turning, locking the lid, you unlock it um, opposing sides at a time. Part of doing the French onion soup is to make the beef broth and I got this I'm not I'm not making a broth from scratch so I'm just using what I could find uh, we went shopping at some Amish stores yesterday and I got a beef flavored soup base with onion oh is it other oh other with other natural flavors and then I have this in my pantry already, bouillon cubes. And I'll show you how I'm gonna make my broth. So, okay. Oh, here it is. Two teaspoons of base to one cup of water. Put it in water. Okay. I just to make it milder. So, so I have um, this pan that I was cooking onions down in. There's a few onions in the bottom. And I figure that won't hurt my bra. So we're gonna do we're gonna get some hot water. Okay. Um, this is about three cups here. Okay. 
I'm going to measure it because I want to fill this whole thing up and see how much yeah, so broth I can make for three. All right, so here's the teaspoon times 30, 60 teaspoons. Okay, I'm going to heat this up, and traditionally French onion soup has red wine. Uh, some people don't use alcohol, some people don't drink alcohol, so a great substitute is Worcestershire sauce. I'm hoping to get like 12 quart jars of soup, if not more, out of this. So this recipe is like a big recipe, and so I'm just going to be pouring, and I just use the whole jar of soup base. Good. This bottle was like maybe half full, I think. It didn't feel all the way full. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're gonna let this get heated up to a boil. Uh, I'm not gonna add salt because there's already salt in that uh, soup base. I'll sprinkle with some pepper and we'll put some garlic. Love garlic. I just have some minced garlic and I'm going to pour some of that in there too. While this is coming up to boil, I'm going to go ahead and get my jars ready with onions. All right, we're going to take the broth now and then fill each jar um, up to one inch of headspace.
right, these guys are ready for the pressure canner. It's releasing the pressure from the onion quartz right now. We have 15 quarts of French onion soup. these onions out of here. Okay, seven quarts. One, two, three, four, yeah, seven quarts of French onion soup going into the canner. And we are going to pressure can these for 40 minutes. So a lot of recipes online will tell you 75 minutes for pressure canning soup. Um, there's, because I'm really confident there's no beef in here, um, I didn't make the broth from scratch. 40 minutes is fine because you want to always can for the ingredient that needs the longest time. My onions are what needs the longest time for this. Um, I don't have any chance of beef or actual meat in the broth. Um, and so 40 minutes is all that we have to do. Okay, the last way that we are going to can onions today is to can the caramelized onions. Um, those are onions that I cook down, um, same as I did the soup onions. And we're just going to can those up. They'll be great for steaks, burgers, uh, you know, whatever you put on my onions on. But you just, you know, save yourself some time. And that way the onions don't go to waste now. And then get saved for another day. Alright, so I'm just gonna fill up the half pint jars with these onions. Okay. So now you've seen the three ways of canning onions and we've got, so we did the diced onions and we did fringe onion soup and then caramelized onions. And the reason why I chose to can the onions is because we don't have a freezer, but maybe you have a freezer or even a dehydrator. And of course those are other great ways of storing onions. Um, I needed to get through these, this big 50 pound bag just quickly and in one day and I think this was an excellent way to do it. Now we have some soup put up for the fall and um, obviously we won't be using it this summer unless you know maybe if someone's sick or something but the goal is to keep it until the fall and when we need it in the winter or fall and um, we'll use the diced onions and caramelized onions whenever we just need a quick quick access to onions. So whether you're new at canning or you're a canning veteran, thanks for checking out my video. If you have any uh, suggestions for other ways to store onions, I would love to hear it. And other ways to can onions anyways, some other good recipes you might have. Um, so make sure you like and subscribe and hopefully we'll be getting some more recipes and canning things up here soon. Okay, thanks. Also, don't forget, you don't have to have a pressure canner. I know that a lot of people um, are wanting to prepare more and put food aside and pressure canning, one, either scares them because they, it's new and it's a foreign concept and they don't know how to do it. Um, but also maybe you can't afford one because they are pricey. Um, this is the all American brand and this is like, I mean, it took me years to be able to get this. I just got it a couple months ago because they're really expensive. So just keep in mind, you don't have to pressure can. People will t tell you that you have to, that, you know, the, I like to call them the ABCs of the government. Uh, they'll tell you that, you know, you have to pressure can and there's certain foods you can't can and you have to follow all their rules because they know what's safe. And um, just keep in mind that people all over the world don't have access to pressure canners. They water bath can all their food. Um, and as long as you do it for three hours, it's safe. So that takes up a lot of propane 
um, or gas or whatever fuel you're using, electric or, you know. But if you don't have access to this guy, then the water bath canner is an excellent choice. So any of the onion stuff I did today, if you water bath it for three hours, it's just as safe as pressure canning it. And, um, you know, not, and so people today in this 2022, in all around the world, they don't have pressure canners. So it's not just, you know, well back in the day, our grandparents didn't know any better and so that's what they used. They're still doing it today because it's just as safe. So don't let people discourage you. And it's always good to learn, but also be open-minded and one of the best rules to follow. Um, if you feel like you've done your research and you've seen other people do it successfully, your kitchen, your rules. So you get to decide what's best for you and what you feel is safe for you and your family. Okay. All right. I will talk to you all later. Thanks.